What is the best way to compare two games? Well, you can repeat the same gameplay in the both games. And this is exactly what I have decided to do with Kerbal Space Program 1 and Kerbal Space Program 2. And what can be better than building Space Station with 6 modules? Building Axiom Space Station Replica sounds like a fun challenge for the both games. And by the way, it's not Axiom Space Station, it's just Axiom Station. Because, well, you know, acronyms exist. The real thing is planned as 3-module commercial expansion of ISS, that eventually would get its own life support, power and heat distribution, well, before undocking and becoming an independent space station. On the gaming side, good question is, can you actually do very simple tasks? Like building modular stations in KSP2 with the first patch. And KSP1 is there to compare. KSP1 would be enhanced by mods both in visual and part departments. You can find all these mods in my other video over here. And I am running extras like near future solar, extra docking ports and small things like Chatterer and Nebula Skybox. And while one can notice that this is unfair to compare modded game to unmodded one. But well, the whole reason for KSP2 existence is motivated by ambition to do better than modded KSP1. And well, reality we will see in this video. So without further ado, let's start building things in KSP1. To construct station in KSP1, I will be using one of my station building SSTOs. Total of 5 launches will make a trick. This is rather capable SSTO. It can lift rather bulky and long payloads. And while it is not really a heavy lifter, it has incredible range once in orbit. Thanks to the built-in wing angle, ascent profile is pretty much automated. So I fly this SSTO pretty much hands-off. At around 8 km, I activate nuclear engines to have extra kick and reduce ascent time. And above 25 km, I use rapier engine close cycle to increase my apoapsis above 70 km. This SSTO do not use monoprop for RCS, so I retain some fuel for the docking purposes. After a rapier boost, I raise my orbit to 110 km, and from there, I just coast into the orbit. Once at Apogee, I simply do circulation burn with my nukes. First module is the first module, nothing special here, just check my compatibility of modded docking ports. Yeah, they work. So, uh, the modded docking ports, the extended docking ports work with the normal docking ports, which is great. And return is a rather mundane procedure. Use cargo bay doors as one huge aero break, because, well, why not? Although this SSTO is more for like a cargo SSTO on the cargo side things, it's not really handled like a jet fighter, just like my other SSTOs. And landing in the dark is always a bit of extra challenge. Was coming a bit hot during the first approach, so I decided to go for the second try, and from the second try it just worked like a charm. Next, the launchers brought more habitation modules with observation module. Ascent profile stays pretty much the same, and getting around with the station is super simple thanks to equatorial orbit. I just tend to put things just above 100 km, so I have access to faster time warp and can actually accelerate my orbital phasing. Once I have something about like 1 km encounter, I will just kill relative velocity, and from there burn to target, then burn retrograde, and once in acceptable range, I just swap to docking mode and RCS. While the real thing would be assembled by a Canada arm on ISS, I felt it a bit unfair for KSP2, and I like totally doubt it will hack. Like it, it just doesn't have ability to handle seven hundred part crafts or ISS or something. Uh, and from future me, like yeah, three hundred parts was a challenge. And this is why we are doing independent assembly in the both cases in the both games. And SSTO is pretty much a huge orbital tag to rearrange station modules. Third docking round required a bit more interesting approach. First observation module was docked to an adir node of the station, and once that was achieved, the third module was docked to the side node. Two of the core modules have RCS control, so I was able to reposition the whole station rather easily. And since we have SSTOs, well, we need to return them. Second landing was as easy as it gets, and the third landing at desert airfield was a bit questionable. You know, if you think about it, if the pilot can walk away from the landing, it's kinda successful landing, but whatever. We are being like omnipotent beings, we can use the quick save, destroy the timeline and just have a proper secured landing. The launch number 4 and 5 once again use the same SSTO with the same ascent profile. And very interesting note about this SSTO construction. It is perfectly balanced in multiple ways. Obviously, it have hands of ascent profile not only for the first part, but for the other parts as well. And it's kind of interesting because, well, 
uh, if you take the Ravio Center of Trust and actually offset it a bit lower than Center of Mass, when the time comes to make the Rapier Boost in the Close Cycle, Craft will naturally pitch up the nose to raise its orbital trajectory out of atmosphere. So, what actually happens? You like take this SSO, put it into the air, just graph 5 degree angle, and put your stability assist into just ordinary stability assist. You touch nothing, the craft fly itself into like 8 km altitude. There, you just press one button to activate nukes. Just wait until you reach like 25 to 30 kilometers. Press one button to activate close cycle of rapiers. Just wait until you pitch up and gain like something 70 plus kilometer on your apogee and deactivate your close cycle. And from there, you just press another button to make the prograde SAS while you chug into like and course into the orbit. This is like AFK vessel. I just love it. And you can actually get the pure stock version of this SSO on my Kerbal X. Link somewhere down below. Alright, docking procedures number four. It actually required me to attach some sort of like research lab and there's like nothing concrete about this module. I think it's just gibberish something. They think that it would be some other module from other producer, not from the Axiom space or something. So it's a bit different. And to get like the proper look, I needed to go and do some EVA construction. And I was a bit rusty on my space construction skills. So after like several minutes of like me just spurging out uh, some nonsense, I started to do actual thing. Uh, the first I attached everything on like a weird angle because, well, yeah, controls a bit weird. But then I went and reattached every single module pretty much at the proper angle. And since, well, you know, like lived in space stations should have its own quirks, I left one module out. You know, because, well, lived in space stations should have things like destroyed solar panels, lack in coolant, and vodka enhanced Ivan in Ushanka. <laughs> Man, this movie was so bad. I need to watch it again. At least it have else in it. All right, docking procedures number five. And I finally involved docking the tower. And it was not the most brightest idea, at least how I'd done it. You know, like using the docking adapter to wheel the tower around like a sausage in space, you know, yeah, this is not, at least sausage will freeze to death or so something, I don't know. After like 15 minutes of failure, I just transferred the pilot to a station and then just use the SAS to align both docking ports, you know, like I just done the proper docking after 15 minutes of failure and yeah, I finally got my lock. So I redocked my SSTO to one of the back ports and it was time to unfold the tower and the observation module. The tower itself unfolded like a charm. Piston raise the panels, then the latches unfold the arms. After that, radiators come into the vertical position, forming the tower itself. And well, the solar panels just unfold it. After that, well, I had some issues with observation module. Pretty common bug with autostrat and robotic parts. The like the things not always unfold as it's supposed to. So yeah, kinda it's there. And you know what? I can try to fix this with a spacewalk, but it would be unfair to show bugs in one game and leave the bugs out from another. Here we go, Axiom Station in KSP1. Six modules, built with SSTOs and have unfolding tower that can actually rotate its solar panels. Now let's try to do the same thing in KSP2. And future me is just, I don't know, hysterical right now because yeah, <laughs> let's do it, let's do it. Alright, making an SSTO in case P2 is rather questionable at the moment, especially like playing SSTO. Uh, for the most part this is due to like low FPS, I just cannot afford to increase real life launch times two or three times. Actually like, if you think about it, we don't even have atmospheric effects in right now, so yeah, it's dreadful. Actually it reminds me of playing KSP1 like five years ago on potato five year old GPU or something. Yeah, it was like bad, I was avoiding SSTOs by any means in KSP1 back then. But only issue like right now that I do not have potato GPU right now, I have normal GPU right now, so yeah, whatever. I'm, yeah, I'm just using a rather simple launch system with a rocket, two stages, cargo bay and some avionics on top. First launch was a bit sloppy, yeah, I flipped my second stage after like the separation of first stage. But my delta V margins are so high that I was able to reach orbit anyway. So I deployed the first module from the cargo bay and decided to make the controlled landing for the second stage because, well, I still have my SSTO swipes, you know, from the first game. And to my actual surprise, I have totally nailed it on the first try. I have like 5 FPS or something and I still nailed the perfect landing. I was surprised. Yeah, but only thing like during the descent, I am opening the cargo base, trying to increase the drag, just like in KSP1, because well reasons. 
Uh, KSP2 actually doesn't work like this. For all I know, the cargo base and fairings actually do not even remove the truck at all. So, before we start with the actual station assembly, there are several things to mention about, well, construction process in KSP2. And there are still a lot of minor issues. Let's say they are minor. And this is not like me bashing the game, because, well, the actual gameplay will not bash, it will just kill it for me. So, the next thing on the list is the part manager. Over here I'm actually struggling to find my solar panels, and right-click do not function for unknown reasons, probably because they are just not on the list. I don't know, maybe. Uh, maybe I just cannot find them. And this is like simple 260 part space station. Imagine like several 200 parties docked like to this thing. Like, it's an unusable system from the UI perspective. There is like no search functionality, there is no favorite functionality, font is just too big, it's just, I don't know, uh, like a side FPS issues. Maybe this is like programmer art placeholder, then it kind of explains things. And UI, well, here is a screenshot of KSP2 with ultra wide resolution. Yeah, this UI actually looks as possible UI. Uh, I would say it's, it's, it's workable, I can play with this. Nobody really games on the ultra wide. Like, I bet there is like less than 5% of systems that use the ultra wide monitors these days, especially for like gaming. Alright, whatever. Uh, Run is over now, the concrete things. Um, here is the symmetry system in KSP2. And let's say it, it, it exists. It's dysfunctional once you try to move or copy any structure with symmetry. Uh, let alone to do something with like non-perpendicular angles. It just breaks in so many ways. Here is me actually trying to rotate solar panels with symmetry. And well, I just failed once again. And this is like real audio on the background. <laughs> <laughs> Let's try to play the game. Let's try to play the game. Let's launch the second rocket and haha, <laughs> I lost control. And outside of the camera that decided to go and do its own thing, whatever, it's like not important, I can launch everything backwards, whatever. Uh, like in the end, I just have no control. I tried several things, but well, just only full reboot of game, just returned control over the rocket. So every single time I launch the new rocket, I need to restart my game. And <laughs> there is a second issue, I was unable to crew my rocket via docked station module. Uh, I don't know what is happening here, I tried something about this, I tried to crew every single module before launch, and it just did nothing, so then I tried to add the module to actual rocket, so maybe the issue in the cargo bay, so if you put the crew inside of the cargo bay, it doesn't work, or maybe if you copy-paste modules, it stops working, I don't know what is happening here, it just doesn't work! Alright! Like, after 4 failed attempts, I finally was able to play the game and finally launch my second rocket. My first rendezvous actually took quite some time before I got used to the whole control shenanigans, but surprisingly, KSP2, Vanilla, Node Control and Rendezvous UI, it's actually quite decent. It's decent, but not playable. Uh, and why not playable? Because, well, uh, you see over here we have blue text on, well, blue backgrounds. And you know you develop the game for, like, blue planet, launching things into the orbit, and then you put blue text into the orbital docking UI. I don't know, you want the price here, I think. <laughs> you can do simple things, you can just add, like, black outline to your text, you can just use different colors for different spheres of influence, like on one planet you can have your blue text, on other like green, on other yellow, whatever, like it's like simple. Alright, we finally are doing docking in KSP2. And how you actually do docking in KSP2? Well, good question, you actually need to press the lead key. Yeah, it will not delete things, it will not do some scary things, it will actually swap docking mode and normal mode. Yeah, it kind of reminds me of Eve Online joke where you like, say to people when they ask something, they, you just say, like, press Control q and it's funny first time, you know? <laughs> Alright, so now in the docking mode, you need to accelerate and decelerate with Q and E buttons, so you could not really rotate in docking mode, so to rotate, you need to swap to the normal mode, rotate, then swap back to docking mode, then... Uh... So, here is my stretch on the keyboard. And this is obviously a stretch from WSD position, because, well, I'm not going to lift my hand from the WSD position. And uh, as far as I can get, it's like F10. Mm, yeah, it's as far as I go. And I have like a buff stretch because I play guitars. So I need to use my other hand to press the lead button, but to do this I need to actually actively look on my keyboard, then look at my monitor, make translation control, look back, forth. Uh, it just doesn't work. It shouldn't be designed like this, especially for something like precise and sweaty as like orbital locking. 
All right. All the times this game made it harder to dock than necessary, I still was able to do my first orbital docking in KSP2. So, another game reboot, and we can launch the rocket number three. All right, so this is the pattern. So I launch things, try to launch things, and still rumble about how the KSP2 actually breaks. <laughs> so I was designing this 260 part station in VAB for like two hours, and the game have crashed like four times. And two of those were actually hard system crashes, resulting in well total system reboots. You know, like early access or not, you can lock features, you can lock optimization, you can lock things to play, but hard crashes are bad. And this is probably like a known issue because crashing four times in two hours is not a random fluke, it's just common issue. And to be fair, like I play a lot of like early access titles. I play things like Satisfactory, Valheim, Project Zomboid, and I have not seen hard system crash in years. Well, before I picked up KSP2. But whatever, we are still here to build a space station. Third launch had two modules. Two modules. As it turned out, one of the modules snapped to not the docking port on the first module, but to the side of the cargo bay, making it permanently welded. So I need to launch this module once again. And to recover non welded module, I was forced to use time warp glitch to actually do undocking because, well, modules were just sucking itself, uh, like, yeah. Nevertheless, module number three is docked to a space station. Yay! Also, like, crew report says that there are two cables on board, but there is none. Yeah. 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 And after all these issues, I have decided to launch next three modules altogether. What can possibly go wrong? <laughs> and, well, aside, like, small camera glitch, all well. Like, all went pretty smoothly, well, before I was greeted by typical We do not ship out the strat for reasons! Uh, so the next launch was reinforced by struts and sort of launch number, like, what? Launch number? Launch number. Oh, well, I'm talking like Hobbit right now. <laughs> launch number 4. Uh, launch number 4.5 reached orbit with three modules on board. Okay, like, l let's do more Lord of the Rings memes. Well, one cannot just launch three modules into space. Uh, yeah, I was doing like circularization burn and the top of my craft just uh, decided to explode myself. Yeah, I lost my third module, I lost my control over the rocket through the rocket, but I have control through my modules that are in the cargo bay. So yeah, redundancy. Space redundancy. Important. Especially in KSP2. <laughs> also, by this point, I was getting like 15 FPS at most. So, yeah, this is kind of experience, you know. Let's check for this. The docking itself, I was actually docking the whole station to my observation module since, well, it's actually lock controls. Initial idea was to actually have Carol inside the actual observation module to control it, but since while well, my game bugged out and I cannot put Kerbos into station modules anymore, I just use the whole station as a docking craft, because yeah, why not? Note uh, that actually over here I'm saving my aim, so the next step was to actually dock the tower section, and behold and welcome, page screen of death. But you know, you can always do my training! <sighs> I have tried to troubleshoot the rest of my craft after like screen of death. Whatever I have done, craft remained kind of as one. During the time warp, the tower module go back to being docked to the rocket, but docking ports count themselves as undocked and module can drift away, but yeah. Then I have like a brilliant gamer idea to actually load my last save file. So here we go. Auto save and normal saves were not there for the last 50 minutes. And this was like complete point where I just totally snapped. I have spent like two hours designing this station, crushed four times in VAB, I rebooted my game after every single launch to keep it playable. I was unable to put Kerbos into station modules, have like couple like minor bugs with the camera controls, chucked on 15 FPS, but after like safe system just completely failed. Uh, like, I just, like, snapped, like, I started this on like 10 a.m. of Saturday morning, and by 7 p.m. It was, like, going nowhere. How? How you can play this? So, as far as I got right now, it's, like, four modules docked together. And even then, I could not save my progress, so it's, like, three modules. So, after listening to Dance with the Devil by Burning Witches, I just safe edited the whole station to orbit. So, enjoy. Axiom Space Station in KSP2. At stunning whatever FPS. Is the KSP2 playable in the current state? Well... Decide for yourself. Until the next time, 
Have a nice one. Yeah, I guess. Out.